Well, happening right now, a massive volcano has erupted near Iceland's capital. This is actually a live look. You can see all of that magma up in the air, up to 100 feet, and nearby areas really on high alert. So joining us now is volcanologist with the USGS California Volcano Observatory, Jessica Ball. Jessica, thanks for being with us. Be with you. All right, residents of nearby Grindavik were evacuated already last month. There have been eruptions in recent years. I actually read that this country is very familiar to volcanoes. They have about 130 of them. Did scientists know this eruption was going to happen? Absolutely. Uh, they were very closely monitoring the area for the earthquakes that happen when magma moves through the ground. And uh, they have their own version of the U.S. Geological Survey there, the Icelandic Met Office. And their scientists have been uh, basically just waiting for this to go off. Wow. And, and that being said, some of these images have been just breathtaking. You just saw some of lava flows and ash just clouding the sky. Talk about the timeline of how long this eruption could last, because it's not just a one and done type of deal. Right. Uh, so this area is actually known for having this kind of fissure eruption. If you were to look at a map, you could actually see old fissures very close to this new one. And fissure eruptions like this um, happen in many places around the world, including Hawaii, for example. And they can last anything from a few days or weeks to uh, months. So that is something that we can't really pinpoint um, even when we're monitoring an eruption really well. And I want to keep this image on the screen that we just saw so we can reference it. Um, what we're seeing is all of this magma is being spewed up into the air. Also, undoubtedly, there has been ash in the area and also a little bit of activity not far from this main site. Can you kind of explain how the volcano makeup works and also what this means on people in the area? Right. Uh, so what's basically driving this eruption and the reason you see this fountaining here is volcanic gases. Uh, so the main one is actually water uh, or steam mm. um, and then also a lot of carbon dioxide and some smaller amounts of sulfur dioxide and other gases. And it's uh, literally like taking the, the cork off of a bottle of champagne or a, a shaken bottle of soda. Um, once the magma makes it to the surface, that's a release of that pressure, and that allows it to spew up into the air. Um, and as long as the magma that's below ground has enough gas in it, it will continue to push itself up out of these cracks and out of the fissure. I see. That's why we are monitoring this so closely. And I remember when the volcano erupted back in 2010, flights were grounded. There were so many concerns over the air quality. What about this volcano and this latest fissure? Does that compare? Can you tell me about the magnitude compared to 2010? Right. Uh, so this is actually a different type of eruption entirely. Um, 2010 was an explosive eruption. So what you had there was gassy magma, but the magma itself was too sticky to flow like this. It was too viscous. And so instead of flowing, it exploded out of the volcano and created all of that ash. Uh, here, what you're seeing is actually um, gas escaping the magma much more easily. And so because it's able to do that, you get lava flows instead of lava explosions. So we're really not going to see the same kinds of volcanic ash produced as we did in 2010. And it's not going to be as much of an aircraft hazard. Well, speaking of aircraft, we actually have a chopper shot right now where they are hovering not too far from what appears to be the ground. Can you tell me about what they're doing? Obviously surveying the damage, but this looks very dangerous from, you know, a bystander's perspective. <laughs> right. Uh, so the main trouble with a helicopter in that case is going to be uh, the heat rising off the lava and also all of those gases you can see in the background coming out in those big plumes. Mm. Um, but what they're doing there is going out and surveying the limits of the lava flows, how far they've traveled and how quickly. And so each day the Icelandic Met Office is putting out a uh, hazard map to show you know, how far these, these hazards are going to occur, whether they're getting closer to the town and what people might have to worry about in the future.
All right, talking about the worries, I want to get to this because I remember shortly after Bartabunga erupted in 2014, there were all these concerns about air quality and to lure people back to Iceland, people like myself took advantage of these special deals. You know, Iceland was named a hot destination that year. Are we planning to see something similar? I mean, is there a little bit of a silver lining where perhaps this could be a draw <laughs> for tourists? Uh, volcanoes are always a good draw for tourists, um, but in this case, the area that it's in is a little harder to access than uh, it might otherwise be. It's not like just walking up to the park in Hawaii and going to see a lava lake. <laughs> um, so initially, because it's threatening a town like that, I would assume that the civil defense is going to ask the people not come and try to see the volcano, as spectacular as it is and let them do their work and uh, you know, either protect the town, keep people safe, or deal with the lava flows um, if they start approaching the town and the ocean. Yeah, because we are talking about serious respiratory issues, correct? We are, yes. So all of those uh, gas plumes you can see coming off of there, um, a lot of that would be the sulfur dioxide that's in the, um, the magma. And that's a really irritating gas. I can say by experience, once you start breathing that in, it makes you cough really badly. It's very acidic. And uh, it's just a nasty experience. And it can also make things worse for people who have respiratory ailments mm -hmm. like asthma or who are already sick. Um, so downwind of that gas plume is going to be just a not good place to be. And over um, for, yeah. Oh, no. And real quickly, because I know we are limited on time. Overall, though, with this, despite there being a town very close by, we don't see the magma itself being an issue here so much. Not at the moment. Um, from what I can tell from reports, uh, it's sort of concentrated in those two vents that you can see on the video right now. Yes. And they seem to be at the northern end of the fissure. So at the moment, um, it's not a direct hazard to the town. All right. Jessica Ball from the USGS. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you for enlightening us on the science behind this volcano.